selections are a gold mine for companies in the broadcast television business. They are the biggest beneficiaries from what's looking to be an incredibly negative and bitter campaign, where both parties are likely to spend billions of dollars on local television advertising, and no one, no one has these names. Now remember, it's not just taking the broadcast and digital business created by the great company, Connect, that I recommend it as a trade before the break. There are a host of broadcast companies poised to rake in the profits this election cycle. Today, I want to introduce them to you. In particular, as my colleague Chris Nolter laid out in the terrific piece for TheStreet.com last week, there are four more broadcast television places with real exposure to swing states in the presidential race and hotly contested congressional elections. Are you ready? They're EW Scripps, Gray Television, Intravision Communications, and Next Star, which is tripling its political exposure by far. Why these companies not the media giants like Disney or CBS? Interesting question, right? Well, because Disney and CBS are big media conglomerates with nationwide exposure, whereas these smaller broadcast places have much more relevant exposure to the wave of political advertisement that anyone who watches live TV is going to have to get used to from now through the election in November. As we say on Wall Street, these smaller companies are the ones more lever to the election. So let's get to go through these four broadcast nations. See which one's the most viable way to profit through the mud bath. And, and that's exactly the word I have to use to describe this race between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. It's barely started and already feels like one of the ugliest presidential campaigns in modern history. But while mudsling may not be a great thing for the Republic, it's unquestionably founders for the companies that can sell airtime to the campaigns and their associated super PACs. We'll go through them one by one. Let's start with EW Scripps. That's SSB. Now, you might recognize it as the sponsor of the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Remember, they rang the bell not that long ago? But this is a company that owns 33 television stations in 17 states, along with 34 radio stations in eight media markets, not to mention expanding collections of digital assets, including the mobile video news service Newsy, the weather app developer WeatherSphere, the podcast advertising network Midworld Media, and the comedy site Cracked. Plus, Scripps produces a few television shows like The List and The Now as well as running its own investigative reporting newsroom with dedicated political sales office in Washington. Now, last year, Scripps spun off its newspaper business as Journal Media Group and was then taken over by Manette. Despite all the radio holdings and the online odds and ends, the new print-free Scripps is a broadcast-focused broadcast company, and 87% uh, of its revenue comes from television. And while the stock has had a rough time lately, down nearly 30% over the last 12 months, as courtesy of some weaker-than-expected numbers in 2015, this company could be poised to make a fortune as we get closer to the election. Like I mentioned earlier, Marcy Rybicker of Wells Fargo came out with a terrific formula to measure how much exposure local broadcasters have to hot races, including congressional, gubernatorial, and of course the presidential election. And according to her, scripts could be the best position of all the local TV plays, with exposure to 56% of the hottest races. That's because the company has such strong swing state exposure. I mean, think about it. They own ABC affiliates for Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, Ohio is so important, right? Tampa, Florida, another important market. NBC affiliate, West Palm Beach, Florida. They also have stations in swing states like Michigan, Nevada, Colorado, and Wisconsin. Not to mention Arizona, where Senator John McCain is engaged in what looks like his most difficult re election campaign in ages. Currently, Scripps is forecasting just $150 million in political advertising revenue for 2016. But given that they made $147 million in 2012, I bet the actual number will be a lot higher. And if that turns out to be the case, this stock could soar. On the other hand, Scripps execution has been, let's say, inconsistent at best, would be nice. And the stock is hard to value. While it's trading 14 times this year's earnings estimates, when the election ends, the earnings are expected to crater. Hence why it trades at 51 times next year's numbers. So even though Scripps may have the most political exposure, the story has some hair on it. Next up, we've got gray television. I did not know about this until we started doing it. 